Okay, so we're ready to start building a sphere. So what have I done? I took my cube class, remember we had this relatively complicated cube class that has a bunch of information in it, and I've copied it over and made a new class sphere, and I've just changed my type and my all this rest of this stuff it stays the same. Um, and we're, the main thing we want to deal with now is to make the render function actually put the right things into it. So I've again just copied the cube class render function. So this is setting up matrices and colors and this sort of thing. And then we had a bunch of things drawing the front of the cube, the sides of the cube. So I've commented all that out or gotten rid of it. And I'm now going to replace that with some math to try to generate all these little points that are, that are on the sphere. So what the heck are the points on a sphere? Well, if you can't remember how to do this, um, step one, go to Wikipedia, look up spherical coordinate systems. Uh, I did this and I scrolled down. And here's the positions, right? So we can map R and theta uh, into X, Y, Z. And so I can do this for each point in the, in the spherical coordinate system. So all I have to do is go over my sphere um, with theta from 0 to 360 and with um, rho to 0 to 180, write a double loop and create all of these points. So let's go back and take a look. So this is what I've done. I've created my two loops. So this is my theta loop and my row loop. And I'm going, um, my theta loop, oh, I'm sorry, my theta loop goes from one to 180 degrees. My row loop goes from up to 360 degrees. And I'm gonna take steps. I wanna have 10 divisions. So I'm taking steps of 10 in my double loop. And then here's the formula that was sitting on my Wikipedia page. Here's X, here's Y, here's Z. This matches exactly what these formulas are, except for I've left out R. So this R is radius. My R is this, is this I think, row. Um, so this is this formula. Now, what are these other points? Well, to draw anything, I don't want to draw points. I want to draw triangles. So these are just the points plus delta a little bit. Um, first delta along my x-axis and then delta along my y-axis, and points 1, 2, 3 will make a triangle. And then I can use some other set of points in order to make another triangle. So I'm just defining the four corners of a square with delta a little bit in each of my two directions in order to get the triangle. So after I define the four points of my square, I'm going to go make the first triangle. Uh, I, this is We talked about this being inefficient in the, in the last set of lectures for assignment three, but I'm not going to worry about the efficiency right now. I just want to do it in a, in a simple way. So I design my set of vertices. UV, we're, we're not, I'm not using UV right now, so I'm just setting my UVs to zero. See, these are all zeros. So I'm not worrying about it. But in my vertices, I'm going to concatenate the points in the right order to make a triangle. And then I'm going to uh, set my color to white for right now. And then I'm going to draw the first triangle using my existing function to draw this triangle. Now, what have I done? I need to pass um, the positions, the UV, and the normals in, into this. This is what I had set up previously. And so I'm passing my positions. My UVs are just zeros. And for my normals, I'm passing the positions again. Why? This is because of the special geometry of a sphere. In a sphere, the position is the normal. But that wouldn't be true for other things. But in this case, I can just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to pass my two triangles. So what do I get? I get this uh, structure over here. So I have all my points of a sphere, and these are just my little tiny deltas. I've just drawn these as squares. So we should go connect all of this and make it connect into a complete sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, uh, and I think I'll do that right here. So I had set D as my step size to go from point to point, and DD is my little delta of how big do I want to make my square. So if I just set my DD to be the full step size, then I'm going to have a complete sphere here. Now, it's really hard to tell what's going on in this complete sphere. And this is the reason why I've broken it down into two different triangles, because I just want to be able to go and, and muck with the color a little bit on the two separate triangles so that I can see what's going on. So, so here I am, and here now you can see the triangles. So one of these triangles, this first one that I draw in the white color here, has these three vertex points. And this is my square around one of my generator points on the sphere. And these three vertices, which are drawing in red, have this here. So we're going to go set this all back to the actual color of our sphere later. But for right now, it's helpful in visualization. And this is why, instead of packing all the vertices into a, into a single array, I've gone ahead and specified them separately, because I'm not passing my colors 
as attributes. I'm passing them as uniform, so I need to I need to be able to do it per triangle like this. Okay, so we have a sphere uh, on the on the screen at this point. So what else can we take a look at? Um, since I've passed normals in, and since I have a way to visualize normals, I should be able to go ahead and do that. So let me turn that on. So here's what your sphere should look like with normals. So and as we rotate around, you know this center point pointing out at us should be the same as that back wall. And when I turn and look over here, this center point color, which is the normal encoded, should be the same as this wall over here. Same for this side. So it looks like I've got my normals in the right directionality. So if you're having any trouble with this sphere and getting it defined correctly, I really recommend you go watch the um, lab introduction from Lucas. He's got a much more extended intro to how to get a sphere than I have, uh, together with some hand sketches on the screen about what's going on and where you're mapping the planes. Uh, I did want to make one additional note. Since we're um, using a two-dimensional parameterization to go create the 3D points of the sphere, that makes a natural way to put UV coordinates. So we have this double loop of T and R, so we can think of those as our U and V. And so the only thing I need to do is I need to scale them back into the range 0, of one, zero and 1. So since I've defined my loops as being up to math pi, I've divided out by math pi or divided out by 2 math pi. Um, since those are the range of my loops. And then for my first point, it was just at the point. At the next point, I was delta off in the t direction. So here I'm delta off in the t direction. So I just defined some u and v here. Um, and then I can go ahead and make my, my uv. And then what do I end up with? I end up with texture coordinates on my object, and I'm able to place a texture on, onto my sphere if I want to. And it'll be parameterized in this way. So. If you're interested in getting a texture onto your sphere, then it should be relatively straightforward as you build the sphere, since you anyway know UV locations for, for these points. If you're trying to debug your debug your UV coordinates on your sphere, then maybe this will help. Here I'm rendering just in my mode that shows UV coordinates. Remember, I, I had you build this mode previously so that you could debug getting textures onto things. So it looks kind of like this. This is what my UVs are mapped onto the sphere currently. Right, so these nothing. This is the UVs encoded into color, so that we can see it. The normals look like this. This was the this was the normal, so we that we had encoded into the into the three color channels. So this is the UVs. So as a last step to making my sphere, I've just moved it using my normal modeling transforms into a location where I want it. Put it down next to next to my object, so that it's inside my little room. I'm ready to go on to my next step.